How we doing guys? Sam here with Anglers and today we're talking about all things popping cork in this week's how-to video. So starting out with the popping corks themselves, there's really two basic designs that you'll see. You'll see more of a round cylindrical egg float and then you'll see one that either has a cut side with a cupped mouth like you see here on this backwater candy along with the H&R. So something you're looking for in a good popping cork is titanium wire. That's going to allow this thing, if it does get a little kink in there, it's going to straighten back out for you and you're still going to have that clacking noise. Uh, so popping corks have been around for a long time. They definitely started in the southern parts here on the east coast, but they have continued to work their way up here. Um, but they're not quite as popular as uh, down south yet. But they really work for a variety of species. You could do just about any predator species around here, you can catch on them. I've seen pickerel caught on them, snakehead, rockfish, redfish, and speckled trout down in the southern portions. Super versatile bait. So starting out with some of the rigs that you can put beneath these. So the idea behind this is you create a nice clacking noise, and then underneath of that, you're gonna have a liter of line with a jig or a plastics of sorts, or even live bait underneath of these. So. The two difference between these poppers here is this cup mouth is going to give you a little bit louder action, something that you are going to try and mimic maybe a redfish feeding. He's going to make a lot more action than, say, a speckled trout feeding. So I might fish this one more for redfish, this one more for trout because it's a little bit more finesse. Uh, this also works a little bit better with bait opposed to the one here with the cup mouth. A lot of times you can either pull the bait off or it's just too much of an aggressive presentation. Uh, so, so the typical things you're going to see behind these are paddle tails and straight tails. Here I have a couple offerings. This is just a three and a half inch bait here from Old School Tackle. And then I've got some five inch straight tail baits here from Z-Man. Uh, as far as the weights on your jig heads go, so typically speaking, I like the lighter ones myself because it's going to have a slower fall. It's going to look a little bit more natural. That being said, there are times when those fish are in that aggressive mode that you are going to want to find something that does fall a little bit faster like these quarter ounce heads do. So as far as rigging goes, it would be putting these underneath of your float and you would be tying here to the weighted side for your leader with uh, typically speaking about whatever depth you're in, you're typically going to try and mimic this. This is something we're going to be doing in shallow water, typically I would say less than eight feet. So as far as leader length goes, I'm going to use a longer leader length with a lighter jig head because that bait is going to fall slower. Therefore, I want to have a nice natural presentation. Opposed to if I was fishing something heavier like these quarter ounce heads, the bait's going to be falling pretty quick anyway. I don't need a long leader for that. Uh, another thing that works really well are shrimp. There's many different profiles out there. That's a savage gear shrimp, which works great, especially if you're having some grass problems because you can rig it weedless. These voodoo shrimps are super, super popular down in the southern parts of our country here, and they make some great natural colors. And, and shrimp are a great profile, especially when they're keyed in on that. So don't forget about the shrimps. So we do sell some here pre-rigged from Hardheads. It comes with this style of popper, and you're also going to have a rockfish one, which comes with a nice quarter ounce jig and a paddle tail and then the snakehead one too which comes with an open jig head whether you want to add a plastic to that or you can even fish a minnow beneath it so there's a million options that you could do with a popping cork it's really just fine tuning it to as what fish you're targeting i uh, even have some flies here i'm going to do this in the winter time cooler times of the year when that fit bait is going to fall really really nice and slow it's also a great one for pickerel fishing because you're fishing in those colder months but those fish are still aggressive in like the early fall early spring like that so let's talk a little bit on how to fish these. Well, that's going to change depending on the time of the year, the fish you're targeting. So for things like speckled trout and redfish, which is they most commonly are going to be used for, um, typically speaking, you're going to be doing that in the summer months because that's when it's most popular in our area. At that time of the year, I'm going to be moving this float a lot quicker than I would be in the spring months or the fall months when everything's a little bit slowed down. So I would start out if I was fishing for redfish and say the middle of the summer like you guys might be doing right now, I'm going to start out with this cupped float here because it's going to have a little bit more pop, throw a little bit more water. And I'm going to work this pretty quick. I might switch it two or three times across the surface, moving it maybe a foot or two off the surface. It's going to lift our jig up, have a nice fall to it. I'm going to fish a heavier jig head so I can get that quicker fall in that summer months. Then I'm going to move it in and I'm going to stop, let it pause, let that jig sink. Once that jig has pretty much sank down to the bottom, that I can start my retrieve again. Uh, if I'm fishing for trout in the spring months and I'm in that cooler water fishing in the islands when I first start pushing back there, I'm going to be fishing the round one and I'm going to work it a lot slower. I might only pop it once and let it sit for five, six seconds. Pop it two times, let it fall again. A little bit slower one with that lighter jig head. Um, fishing for rockfish in the fall months and you're going to be throwing either one of these, really. They both make a good commotion for you. 
Uh, I'm gonna work that bait pretty quickly, and a lot of times I'll fish these, which have a little bit more whip to the tail, maybe a little bit more action underneath of those. So there's a million ways to fish them. You kinda gotta dial that into as what you're targeting and the time of the year, things like that. So we appreciate you guys for stopping by, and if you have any questions, come on through. Have a good one, guys.